Welcome back to Gaming with Marty. We return with our Madden 24 series. This week we have a clash of the conferences. Houston Texans facing off against the Atlanta Falcons. That means CJ Stroud facing off against Desmond Ritter. Stay tuned to find out who wins. season already in the rear view mirror and off we go in week five on EA Sports and we will not see a run back on the opening kickoff this will be a touchback the Falcons ready to go to work here on offense and at the helm in his second season Charles it's Desmond Ritter and you and I both know that any win is a good win and that's what they did last week but there's also plenty for him to work on in his game, wasn't there? Yeah. Two touchdowns, an Had interception. To yeah, you know, he wants to increase that a little bit in terms of ratio. But first and foremost, they did win the game. Here's Ritter now to throw on their first play. A hit as he throws there, incomplete. You look at the defense for these Texans. They're in the spot statistically that you don't want to be in against the pass. Number 32 in the league, dead last. That was a nice play right there, but overall this season, it's been an absolute disaster. A total lack of communication on the back end. They need a leader who can put this team, this unit, on his shoulder pads and carry them to the right spots. And he'll be taken down, but not before they reach the 50. It'll go as a gain of 25 on a play that started back at the 25. Well, the first drive here and the first time that we've called a big tight end's name, but I, I can assure you this, Charles, it, it won't be the last. No, it won't, because when he gets going, now it opens up opportunities on the perimeter because that'll draw the defense towards him. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. Malik Collins coming right up the gut, gets in there for a loss of nine. Well, he was really focused downfield, but there was really no viable options. The coverage was too good. And the defense really quickened the tempo of that play with their pass rush because there was nowhere for him to go with the pickup. The only place he ended up, down on the ground. That first down there on a pickup to 25. Good job there to locate his tight end, Charles, in the middle of the field. Yeah, he has good pass-catching abilities, and if they're able to continue to find him here in the early going, I think it'll help out his teammates out on the perimeter. He can take the big shots later if he occupies their attention. And the gain here to the previous play, and it's better than 40 yards total. But one of the ways the quarterbacks keep all the receivers alive in a play, never lock in on any one guy. Make sure you keep your eyes moving, scan the field, and here he finds the open guy for a nice pickup. And they'll let the quarterback keep it here on first and 10, and they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. It'll be a pickup of five on the keeper. It's second down. Now some movement before the snap. And we'll hear from our referee for the first time this afternoon. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. A false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. Working from the gun, Ritter. And he's wrapped up, taken down, back at the 25. Jonathan Greenard running in to pick up the sack. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer, and a big play here on third and long following the sack. He'll drop to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. That's where the kid could have just ran for the first down there. When he dropped back behind a line of scrimmage, so he still had the option to pass. Accumulating first downs 
does not go up on the scoreboard, but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So here are the Texans now with a fresh face at quarterback. The second overall pick from Ohio State, C.J. Stroud. And he's playing at a very high level here in this early part of the season. In fact, he leads the NFL in passing yards. Now, that's not always an indicator of success. But in his case, it is. A oh, man coming off a great rookie year, it's Damian Pierce. Boy, left that first defender grasping at air as he winds up getting a full eight yards on that play. The numbers for him from a week ago, a boatload of carries, five yards past 100 and a touchdown. How about the first month of the season for him? He leads the league in rushing, so you know his confidence is at an all-time high, which means his offensive line loves it too. They'll get more opportunities to run block for him. And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Calling no gain that time, as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. You're talking about this Falcon defense. And this unit, very tough to throw against. Currently second best in the NFL. And this is what we talk game inside the game. Top five passing offense versus top five passing defense. I wouldn't be surprised defensively if they change up coverages a bit more than usual to try and combat what they expect to see. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. Finds his man, it's John Mechie. And a huge play there for Houston. 44 yards. And the offense is saying to itself right now, if only they were all this easy because he was wide open. And once he made the catch, plenty of room to work his way downfield. That was a breakdown on the defensive side of the ball, one that they want to fix immediately. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Running it out of the gun with Pierce. And he'll get about three as he's taken down at the 14-yard line. Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Flushed out right. This will be caught just inside the 10. So five yards here, five on the play. And that's going to bring up third and two. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps him the back and turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Pierce will try to pick it up. He's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. Well, they picked up a portion of it, but not all that they needed. Now that leads to a decision on fourth and one. Let's see what they decide to do. And no move to get the offense off the field. They'll stay put on fourth and one. Here's Stroud. And he is caught. Touchdown. John Mechie. His third touchdown now on the year. And the Texans' decision to go for it pays off with six points. They took a pretty big risk right there, going for it on fourth down. But, hey, not only did they get the first down, forget about that, they got in the end zone. Yeah, because normally you're just thinking, can I get enough yardage to get it past the sticks and pick up a first down? Instead, they go for the end zone and get it done with no margin for error. Remember, fourth down, they went for it. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. Grant, he will not return it, and his guys will begin at the 25. So for the second time in this one, we get set to see the Falcons' offense. And last time, able to get three. It's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. 
they'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you, you described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. Now the first running back taken back in April, the former Longhorn, B. John Robinson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Four C and completion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in the expected passing situation. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. Looking to throw it here, Ritter. And that's off the mark, incomplete. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Ritter now. That's out wide here for Robinson. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. And I like the idea here. Get the ball in his hands, even if it's in the passing game. Three catches a week ago, and he does a nice job here to pick up yardage. And he's got some space here. And he's going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And if his coaches are correct, we're going to see a lot more runs like that from this young rookie going forward. And you know, slapping each other on the back up in the boots right now? The scouting department, because they really recommended this guy highly, and he's justifying their faith in him. Ritter. Looking left side, that's caught by Ritter. And he's going to get this down near the 20-yard line. Another big gainer that time. This one goes for 19 yards. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Ritter with it after the play fake. Another to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. Jonathan Grenard. Now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play. Ritter and the Falcons need an answer, and a big play here on third and long following the sack. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third, and now they deal with fourth down. So another incompletion there. He's hitting on fewer than half his pass attempts in this one, and that is not a winning formula. Yeah, so let's make sure we give a little bit of credit to the defense here. They've given him a lot to think about, a lot of different looks. He seems a little bit confused trying to complete passes. He might be being slammed up here for a busy ball game. Already two kicks in the first quarter, and he's not both through the post. And for now, you know they'll be happy getting those three points. But what they really want is to find a way for him to kick extra points instead of field goals. To return it, Darius Phillips. And he takes this near the 25. Just a little pass there. Call it the 26. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. This drive here beginning probably with a pair of motivated groups. Remember, the offense scored a touchdown on their last time out looking to repeat that in Charles' defense. They were very frustrated after giving up six the last time on the field. And frankly, it's just a battle of wills in a lot of ways because you know they're both motivated. They both game plan for this drive, and they both have specific outcomes in mind. To me, it just comes down to who can execute better and which side can step up and assert its will over the other. Zone coverage there, and they were playing deep. That makes it obviously a little bit harder to run by guys. At that time, there was not much of a window to get the ball in there, and it winds up incomplete. Stroud's throw pulled in by Woods. And he's going to be brought down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. After one, a one-point game, 7-6. Texans football to start quarter two as they've got it with a third down coming up. 
Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They run with the former Buffalo Bill, Devin Singletary. And he is going to have the Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And hold on here because on that last run, it looks like we have a player who was shaken up. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Pierce now up the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 44 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. His first carry of their second drive, pretty solid. And, of course, remember back to their first drive, really strong throughout that one. Not only is he getting good blocking up front, but how about his vision to find the holes? They see things before they even open and hold it into him. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice gain there. This one goes for 20. That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. Jesse Bates made the tackle from his safety spot. Here's second and five now from the 22. Stroud looking to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Cook has that time to knock that one away. Should have looked like a short touchdown. They will get a good break on the football and finish the incompletion. Nice offense on third down today. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Throwing now is Stroud. And they're going to get him. He's sacked back around the 28. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. So on fourth down, Texan kicker Kyrie Fairbairn comes on. Fairbairn able to put this one through. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. Fairbair now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. And yeah, this will be a touchback as Grant opts not to return it. Here comes the Atlanta offense now ready to take over here. And after the field goal last time, let's we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Robinson gets the toss on the right side. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Robinson with another carry. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. Ritter now looking to throw it this time. And caught by London. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. The catch and run there, good for 16 in the first. Robinson, he'll try the left side. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt. Short completion, just four yards. And now that's...
that sets up third and two. They'll come to the line needing only two yards to gain the first here. Ritter here on third and two. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. So the drive stays alive after the fourth down conversion. First and 10 inside the 30. That's going to be caught by Pitts. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Now after the play, it looks like there's a Texan here slow to get up. Well, now they're going to come out and take a look at this injury, and we'll be back in a moment. They'll run with Robinson. And he gets in. Touchdown. B. John Robinson, his second rushing touchdown of the year. And the Falcons are once again back in front. Ku able to connect on the extra point, and that gives him a three-point lead. A 10-play drive that time, and it was Bijan Robinson who took it home with a touchdown run. Following the touchdown, here's Ku to kick off. This taken in at the goal line. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. Houston offense running back out, and we'll get another look at John Mechie. Well, September sure treated him kindly. Now we flip over to October. Any reason to think that those numbers drop, or can he keep the pace up? Well, he can keep the pace up, but it's going to get a lot more difficult now. To me, it's a lot like baseball, all right? When guys, you know, when they first hit the league, whether it's a pitcher or a hitter, and they go through the league the first time and they're hot, people are going, wow, what a phenom. Then they get tape on them, they get scouting reports, they start to do different things. Let's see if he's going to adapt and expand his game in order to keep up that type of production. That's a good call because he's a known entity. Let's see how they defend him going forward. On second down, here's Pierce. Takes this to the 27, give him four yards. That second down play call is not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. He gets this one to Mechie. Now he won't quite make it. He needed six. He got about five. Fourth down. A short game that doesn't get him the first down. Brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. Fourth down. Here's Stroud. He's got his target. That's complete. And they're going to across midfield and inside the 45. Defensively, a bit of a collapse, allowing the fourth down play to result in 23 yards. From Falcon territory now, here's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Here's Pierce on the counter. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. 60 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here this first down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And Stroud now to throw. Flush to his right. And he's taken down, trying to do a little too much, getting outside of the pocket, and it results in a sack.
Stroud on third down now. And that is incomplete. <laughs> Whether that's a little grabbing, a little hand fighting, by any means necessary on third down, he was able to get the job done in the secondary and swat that one away. On is the punter, Johnston, now as he sends this one away. So that'll be marked down as a 19-yard punt. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. B. John Robinson leading the offense out for another drive. He's been good. His guys are winning. So far, the rest should be working here in the second quarter. And he doesn't like to just tote the rock. He wants to carry his team on his back. And that's what he's done throughout this game. Yeah, he's done that. He'll be hoping to continue. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Desmond King picks it, and he'll get this back to the 32-yard line. Well, CD, I know it's just his second year in the league as a quarterback, but that's going to be one when he flips on the tape. He's like, ah, I shouldn't have thrown that ball. No doubt about it, and his coaching staff will be emphatic about he shouldn't have thrown that ball. But remember, second year, as you noted, on the job training, so he's got to take this feedback that he's getting, negative or otherwise, and turn it into positives moving forward. Right up to that point, I was about to say he's had a pretty good half catch in the football, but let's just be honest about it. He should have caught that one. And he knows that. That was one right in his bread basket and one he normally catches. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Nice back to back plays defensively. They're stacking momentum now. One incompletion, two incompletion. They're going for it. A shotgun snap to Stroud. Work in the middle of the field, and he's got a man complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight yard line. And now we'll get a stoppage here. There appears to be an injured Falcon on the field. Well, hopefully, obviously, nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, are going to take a peek, and we'll take a break. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. Now Stroud. And that is caught. Touchdown, Texans. Dalton Schultz, his first touchdown on the year. And the Texans will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. There was a lot of zip on that pass, and baseball might have called that a frozen rope. I like it when you bring the diamond into the game. I'm going back to the gridiron, had some heat on that bad boy. Sometimes you throw a touchdown pass, and sometimes you throw, what, a touchdown strike? There you go. That's my man in concert. Fairbairn good with the extra point, and that will make this a four-point game. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbairn now to kick it away. Grant, he will not return it, and his guys will begin at the 25. And the Falcons now are going to go on offense late in this first half. A slim deficit here in a one-possession game. Not much time left, obviously. We'll see if they can march this down the field, at least get three, and take some momentum into the locker room. Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. The Falcons going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Ritter to throw it. And he's going to go down. The Texans come at him and able to bring him to the ground. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. Let's go do this. Let's get it done. It's showtime, baby. Let's Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. Ritter will set up to throw it. This pass is caught by London. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 42. First down, here's Ritter. And that's to the left sideline and incomplete. 
And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try to pick up another first down. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. This will be spotted just shy of midfield. A 59-yard attempt. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough juice. An ambitious effort, but it's well short. So we've reached halftime here in a four-point game. As we head down to our land. As we hit halftime, Texans up with a two-touchdown lead over on Armand A four-point lead over the Falcons. CJ Stroud has thrown two touchdowns. Looking pretty decent out there. Got to improve in our run game. And make sure defense keeps doing what they're doing. Let's get right back to it. Well, we'll move right through the break then, skipping halftime and back to the field for the start of the second half. Welcome back. Charles and I settled into the booth ready for quarter number three. It's the Texans in front, and they're going to get the football first as we are back underway in the third quarter. On the return, Phillips. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And good starting field position. He'll get this one all the way up to about the 35-yard line. So here are the Texans to take over. They're on a three-game winning streak and right now looking good in this one as well. Good starting field position for the Houston Texans here as they come up first and 10 at their 35-yard line. A run by Pierce begins the second half. And this defense not giving him anything there. Maybe a yard up to the 36. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. The second down throw now from Stroud. Sliding out of the pocket. And this will be caught at the 30. And he's brought down after a very nice game. 36 yards on the play. And what great recognition between a receiver and his quarterback because he's going to recognize the trouble and then he has two options. Cut off the route and come back to hell or head straight down the field and he chooses the latter and it turns into a huge play. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. So from the 26-yard line, here's the second and eight. Another carry for Pierce. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. Here's Stroud. Eluding the pressure right. And that nearly the pick that they needed. He couldn't pull it in, though, and it's fourth down. They really had a good drive going there, but a nice recovery by the defense these past few downs. Able to knock that one away on third down and bring up what I think for the offense, an unexpected fourth down here. Well, looking at it from a defensive perspective, that keeps the deficit very, very manageable. You know, all things considered, not a bad job on the defensive side. I would say that you've pointed out something pretty good right there, and that is you actually have both sides happy with that exchange. You know, happy in quotes, of course. One team, hey, we've kept, kept it within range. The other side saying, hey, we put points on the board and did stretch out the lead. Let's see how this one turns out. Yeah, still bottom line, though, three points for the opening drive of the third quarter. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. And their deficit a little wider now than it was at halftime following the field goal a moment ago. But the goal is still the same because you know they want to come out, establish a rhythm in the second half and get going. Make no mistake about it, though. Kicking field goals, not in their game plan. They need to get the ball in the end zone. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. Straight ahead is Robinson. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. Miles Jack there to make the tackle. So from just across the midfield stripe, here's second and nine. They'll run this one right with Robinson. 
five yards. Now it's third and five. I really like the vision he displayed on that play because he saw there wasn't a lane to completely break off a huge gain. So he found where there was the most space and got what he could. A nice, dirty run that's a positive play for the offense. He'll get this to his tight end. It's Jonu Smith. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. First time they've looked his way in this game. He comes through picking up the first. On the counter, this is Robinson. And able to get this to the 31. How about the big guy there showing some agility? He just flowed from his D tackle position in order to make that play. From the 31, here's a second and eight. Looking to throw it here. Ritter. All right, rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Shaquille Griffin with a pick. And the Texans are going to take over once again at their own 25 yard line. And Brandon, this is a real nice job defensively getting inside a quarterback's head and figuring out, okay, where is he going with the football? Because you can make an educated guess defensively, not all the time, but sometimes. And when you're right, you've got a decent chance of coming away with the football. Excellent job pushing through tacklers that time to pick up six. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short, could they just hand it off for another big game? Or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? And Pierce gets it again on second down. And he'll fight forward maybe to the line of scrimmage, but that's all. No gain on the play that time, and they look to convert on one of the third and four. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Stroud. They'll roll him out right. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. Now that's all about making something happen as a quarterback because instead of forcing something on third down, how about him buying some time outside of the pocket, waiting for someone to come open? And when he did, he put it on him for a big play and a first down. Down to about the 37. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. From the 37, they work on second and six. Back to throw, here's Stroud. He finds his target, it's Schultz. And that's going to be good for another first down as the tackle's made at the Falcons' 27-yard line. Texans passing game in rhythm right now, picking up another first. First and ten, it's Pierce. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. On second down, it's Stroud being chased out left. Short throw into the hands of Jordan. And he'll be out of bounds as he gets this down about the 21 or 22. Cool about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take what you can guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives a much better opportunity to convert on third down. And on third and five, this will be the eighth play of the drive. Stroud to throw it. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. Going to be stopped before he can get moving forward as he'll lose a couple back to the five-yard line. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. 
Stroud looking to throw. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. Now a timeout called for by the offense. It's just their first, so two remaining as they burn one here in this third quarter. Third and goal, Stroud. He'll buy some time right toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. That was well played, but that was also an example of a corner who understands his coverage, realized he had support behind him, and could be a little more aggressive in the shorter zone, and did exactly that, knocking that pass away. We think about it, that's a pretty important second half field goal, Charles. That now stretches this to two possessions and really kind of ratchets up the pressure on that opposing sideline. It certainly does because that interception and adding a field goal to it, that puts them in firm control of this game right now. They're about one more big stop from putting this thing absolutely out of reach. Yeah, this will be a touchback as Grant opts not to return it. So out come the Falcons now. Not an ideal way to end their previous drive. They threw the interception, Charles, after they had built up some momentum. They were moving the football, but something to at least build on for this offense as they run back out here. Yeah, you're right about that. Up until that last play, everything was working pretty well for this offense, gaining chunks of yardage, getting first down, really making a push for the end zone. It looked like they had a nice rhythm going. Now you got to have a short memory here. Don't focus on the interception. Focus on what came before it and get back to it. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. Second and six, just inside the 30. It's the Falcons. They'll have the football, but trailing on the scoreboard as we get set to begin the fourth. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. So give him two yards there on the completion. And that'll bring us to a third and four. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field. Well, this is intercepted. They get Ritter for the third time. Picked off by Steven Nelson. And nearly a touchdown as they finally stop him down at about the three-yard line. Boy, so another interception, CD. It feels like he's starting to unravel a little bit. And as you would expect, still a work in progress here in his second season. He has to start ironing out some of these mistakes, though, because now his head coach, his offensive coaches, they have to evaluate whether you keep playing him and let him work through it, or you start thinking about going to his backup. Stroud out of the gun here. And it's intercepted at the goal line. And the Falcons are right back in this football game. So the ball changing hands on the interception. But meanwhile here, we do have an injury on the play. The medical staff will attend to him, and we will step aside. Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. I'm darn right. They did something to disrupt that timing. Back to throw, Ritter. Throw left side complete. That's Robinson. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. The linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Give him big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. The punt team on now as Pinion sends this one away. Taken from just outside the 30. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And the Texans will take over. And the football going back over now to the Houston Texans. 
Now, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there, playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. If you can keep getting gains like that, Charles, with the lead here in the fourth quarter, I mean, keep running it, right? No doubt about it, but what the offense coordinator has to do is understand. They're going to continue to stack the line of scrimmage. What runs do you have in your arsenal that'll work against a stacked box and continue to move the ball? 92 yards rushing now for the NFL leader coming into this ball game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. And they'll go right back to Pierce. And he's got room. And he's brought down at the 19 after a gain of 19. First down in the red zone. No doubt those are the types of carries they're looking for here, Charles. The lead in the fourth quarter. This is when coaches that have a reliable running game, they breathe a little easier on the sideline. Yeah, they love the idea that they can take the air out of the football at this point of the game. That means they're really counting on that offensive line, counting on the runners taking care of the football because you're going to tell your quarterback, hey, no time to be a hero. We're not going to throw it here. Just eat up that clock. And if you have the ball, they can't score. Now to change things up, Stroud will throw it. Escaping the pressure right. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Well, he certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. From the gun on third down, here's Stroud. Buying time to his left. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Woods. And he's going to come up well short as they rally up to stop him at about the 16. So a big one coming here for Kaimi Fairbear. A 33-yarder from the left hash. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And that will extend their lead even further. So that may be not a knockout blow, but I, I suppose certainly every little bit helps when you're trying to salt one away in the fourth. Well, the possibility of being beaten by two late touchdowns or at least sent to overtime does exist. But time, definitely a big factor at this stage of the game, is in their favor. Graham, he will not return it, and his guys will begin at the 25. Now the Falcons' offense, they get ready to head back out here. These guys definitely hoping for a better showing than their last appearance. They couldn't really even move the football much beyond the shadows of their own goalpost, Charles. We'll see if they can get a better, more sustained drive going here. Yeah, and every team that we ever talk to says the exact same thing. When you start a drive from that deep in your own territory, the goal is a minimum of at least two first downs because even if you have to punt then, you change the field position, right? You flip the field a little bit. They didn't get that done. This time they want to string together a nice drive and help themselves out. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely, just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 44-yard line. A really nice pickup of 14 yards, and it moves the sticks. Now Ritter to throw on first down. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here in this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. Ritter now. And caught by London. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Ritter and London team up there. First down, Atlanta. Again, he'll drop the throw. Tight end has become a bigger and bigger part of the passing game in the NFL. But if you drop the football, that position can get swapped out with a you know, wide receiver in that spot, a running back in that spot. There are other ways they can go if you're not going to catch the ball. And that's not just his first drop, his second drop of the game. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. What would look like a march to the end zone is hit a momentary roadblock with that incompletion. No need to panic. They just got to come up with a high percentage play call and see if they can get their offense back on track. 
Stick it with a passing game. Here's Ritter again. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by the former first rounder, Jimmy Ward. And the Texans are going to take possession here at their own 33. Well, down two scores in the fourth quarter. It maybe wasn't quite desperation time, but it was getting close. And that interception there on the deep ball, that probably slams the door on their chances. And maybe that was the thought process, that it wasn't quite desperation time. So now you take the shot before they're going to lay back any farther on defense. Go ahead and throw it downfield. Unfortunately, it didn't work. Pretty good results here on the first down run as he takes us forward for about six. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. And this is an absolutely big third down that's been set up here, partner, and there's no other way to put it. The defense has to get a stop here if they have any hopes of winning this game. Pastor, you said big... And he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. It'll be a loss of eight on the sack, and it's going to lead him to fourth down. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. Here comes Grant on the return. A good kick that time, but also a pretty good 15-yard return. And it will be Falcon football. So now Ritter and the Falcons down by 13. A minute 50 to play. And their undefeated season about to go by the wayside, barring a late miracle. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. They'll come up now on second down. Now Ritter. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. Ritter. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. And now this ball picked up by the offense. But here in the final two minutes of the game, this will be blown dead. Only the fumbler can advance the football. So this will go back to the spot of the fumble itself. And able to catch it, but he's out of bounds. And the throw took it beyond the sideline, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. It's a turnover on downs. We've got to have two hands on the football here as they run on first down. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down. Second and right at a yard. He's going to get it again. Just looking to get forward and protect the ball. Falcons going to use their third and final timeout as they'll get it with just a shade under a minute to go in the game. Five points of contact necessary at this stage as they'll run on first down. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a gain of 14 there, and that should be enough to get him home free. We got to get Pierce in there for the touchdown. He's worked too hard over the last couple games and not walk away one from this one for sure. I'm going to use timeouts and everything to make sure he gets this. submission wave the white flag so the ball position now at the three here's second and goal now it looks like he'll throw here throw left side complete that's pierce touchdown texans damian pierce from three yards out and the texans are closing in on a four and one start as they extend their fourth quarter lead Another touchdown through the air for them and for this rookie quarterback at the helm. He has put them in a great position, Charles, to get the victory in this one. He's absolutely taken charge. Every touchdown for them has come via his arm. 
Zero rushing touchdowns, no special teams, no defensive scores. All him throwing the football. He's in cruise control right now, and so is his team. And this one incomplete. So they went for the two, they don't get it. So unable to throw it in for two from the two. Let me ask you, as a former DB, what changes there around the goal line on a two-point conversion as far as how you're defending it? You just make sure you never back up and you never retreat. You establish yourself really on the line of scrimmage, put your heels on the goal line at worst. If they're going to throw the ball, make them throw it over your head because they're going to run out of space because of the back of the end zone. Never let a guy catch one in front of you. Ritter on first and ten. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. They lead big, and a major part of that has been how they've taken their play to a whole new level this second half. No points allowed since the break, and you can add another incompletion to the total number that they forced in this runaway contest. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. And that's another play that's painted the picture of this game overall. It's been a blowout. It's been continually fueled by big turnovers and stops for one side and an inability to advance the ball from the other. Now Ritter. And throws it on the move, but can't connect as that falls incomplete. This has obviously been a bad loss, but one of the few things they can still do is try and throw the ball all the way to the end zone and get some points on the board so they're not shut out over the final two quarters of this game. Fielding just inside the 30. So Houston going to come away here with the victory. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second quarter. Do you think they thought at all that that would be their last point of the game? No, I, but what a second half. The adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was. Well, there you have it. Appreciate you guys for stopping out to see CJ Stroud face off against Desmond Ritter. And as you see, Desmond Ritter a little bit shaky there. Four interceptions while CJ threw an unfortunate one interception, but three pretty decent touchdowns. So we head over to the four and one on the season. And we'll look forward to it next week. Appreciate you guys stopping out. Peace out. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.